Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Conversation. I'm Jamin Shively, joined by all my dear brothers and sisters here. In fact, go ahead and jump in and say your name and say good evening, say whatever you want to say so that we can all be connected. Anyone who feels like it, there's never any pressure to speak. So if you feel like it, if you feel inspired, unmute and say hello. Hey, Mexico here. <laughs> Capitol Heights, Maryland here. Watsonville, California, in the house. Fort Huron, Michigan. I'm here. Happy to be with my new family. Sedona, Arizona, representing. All right. All right. Beautiful, beautiful. And we also got uh, Canada in the house, Ontario, Canada, in the form of Christopher. And uh, anyway. That's so me. Sorry, I couldn't talk. Oh, now dude. I'm back don't, outside. Don't, don't worry about it. You're all good. You're all good. Look, there's never any pressure to talk. It's, it's you know, when you can say hello, you say hello. It's no big deal. And, um, and what's interesting is, so we got, we got United States, Canada, Mexico. So we basically got the whole North American Free Trade Agreement. We got NAFTA in the house. And Marco is holding up the border right there at the border between the United States and Canada, right on the river uh, that, that borders, borders the two countries. Um, so uh, thanks everyone for chiming in. And thank you, Peter, for the dream catcher. I want that dream catcher to catch a, this dream that's gonna come pouring out. Thank you, Jimena, for the dream catcher. I want that to catch. In fact, let me go, let me go snag a dream catcher in my head. I'll be right back. Ancient spirits in the house. <laughs> You're cleaning, that's great. That's beautiful. You made that? Ah. A shaman made it. I will tell shaman. Ooh. Dude, I have not been Zoom saged before. This is a special. All right. Dreamcatcher's in the house. Here is the dream. That, and I didn't mention where I'm dialing in from. And I'm honored to be, can y'all hear me okay? Let me just make sure I've got my, yep, yeah, okay, good. Um, thank you. Where I'm dialing in from um, is uh, the lands of the Coast Salish, uh, the Haida, Simpson, Clinkett, Duwamish of the, the lands in the Salish Sea where I live on, on Whidbey Island near the south end of the island. And um, I give thanks to the, the First Nations peoples of all of the territories where we are connecting in from. And 
uh, give thanks for 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 hosting us. And uh, the dream, this is one of those dreams that uh, is I believe you're going to kick off the entire transformation. I can see the whole thing just exponentiating and and let me let me talk about the basis for it, okay? The basis is that food is expensive, but it's artificially expensive. And it's not it's not artificially expensive because of any kind of conspiracy whatsoever. Right? It's artificially expensive by the, just the very nature of the supply chain and bringing food from relatively inexpensive real estate like farms to very expensive real estate like Manhattan. And um, with, with Silish, we, we did the math. He actually looked into how much would it cost to buy a truckload of lentils, 40 tons of lentils, right? And um, if you go to the store in the, in the United States to buy dried lentils, you know, you're going to pay on the order of between a dollar and two dollars a pound, right? If it's cheap, if it's on sale, you know, you might get one of those 12 ounce bags for 99 cents. Well, you're paying, you know, a pound is 16 ounces, so you're paying more than a buck a pound. So between a dollar and two dollars a pound. Guess how much it would cost us on a per pound basis to buy a, tr a full truckload, double trailer. 40 tons of lentils. Anybody want to take a guess? What is the per pound cost? Six per, cents. Per pound cost of 40 tons. Of lentils. Just just th think in terms of cost per pound. Just just ballpark it. Don't try to do the math and multiply by 40 tons. We can we can do that together. But What's uh, just 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 a ballpark estimate? A quarter. Twenty-five cents. Twenty-five. Thirty. Uh, Twenty. Twenty cents. Okay, I got I got twenty. Twenty-five. Thirty. Thirty. I, I, sound, I sound like a Texas suction. It sounds like a sound like a Texas suctioneer in Crawford, Texas. Forty-five. <laughs> right. Forty-five. Forty-five. You got forty-five. 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 Forty. Did, did I hear somebody say six cents? Who said six cents? So that was me. Christopher. Christopher. Well, I don't know what you've been smoking, Christopher, but it's got a truth serum effect because the actual cost at the source, six and a half cents a pound. And the thing is, Christopher has an unfair advantage on y'all because he's Canadian. The supplier from whom, from whom we can buy it for six and a half cents a pound is in Canada. So, you know. Molson Canadian and hockey and A and you know all that good stuff. Um, <laughs> Take off, you hoser. <laughs> and hosers and all that good stuff. All right. <laughs> Six all right. cents American or Canadian? American. American. Six and a half cents. Six and a half cents American. Tack on, um, you know on the order of maybe another three cents for shipping, depending on where you want to get it to. Let's be generous per pound. And let's be generous and call it an even 10 cents a pound, okay? Landed wherever you want it delivered, okay? If you've got a very specific address in Minneapolis, Minnesota, we'll put it, we'll get it there for 10 cents a pound, okay? Now, that, that pound of lentils, you know, when you put a pound of lentils in the pot, you know, you fill it with so many quarts of water or whatever, right? A lot of water, right? You soak it overnight, um, maybe put in some onions, um, but let's leave out the onions just for the moment, okay? Because I just want to do a, just a straight price comparison just on the lentils, all right? So 10 cents a pound, we're talking dry weight lentils. Anyone want to guess how much that ends up being in wet weight. How many liters of water do you, th you throw in? Maybe like four liters or something? I don't know. Four quarts? Probably six, about six quarts. Eight eight to ten pounds. Well, if it's six, if it's six quarts, a quart's about a kilo. 
And if it's six quarts, that's like, you know, oh, six, six, six kilos, right? Six which is kilos, over, six liters, sorry. Yeah, which is, yeah, six kilos, six liters. Liters, just a little more than a quart. Anyway, if somebody wants to look it up, that'd be great. If somebody feels like looking it up, how many quarts for a pound of dried lentils? We might as well get it right, okay? And, um, but let's just, let's just say that that ends up being 10 pounds of, of, of cooked lentils, okay? All right, listen to the implication of that, all right? We're talking rough numbers, okay? So let's not, let's not get it. We don't have to get hung up on the exact number. 10 pounds of cooked lentils that cost you 10 cents for the pound of dried lentils. That equates to one penny per pound of cooked lentils, you know, wet cooked lentils. You follow me? All right. A penny per pound of wet cooked lentils. Now, rough, rough numbers, okay? It can't be that different for rice. And even if rice is twice as expensive as lentils on a per pound basis, dry, which I'd be surprised. But let's just, let's just do the math and assume that for rice, actually, no, no, let, let, let's do rice separately because rice doesn't net that many extra pounds of rice. Lentils are kind of special, all right, because they expand so much, right? You know, they start out being so tiny, right? And then they really puff out. Um, rice, it's a two to one ratio. So on a pound per pound basis, you might get to three to one. So let's say that rice costs maybe 10 cents a pound and then the wet, the cooked rice ends up being three cents a pound, okay? So the lentils are coming in a penny a pound wet, the rice three cents a pound, okay? Then you got potatoes, which are probably less than a penny a pound <laughs> wet, right? They're so cheap. Um, they can be very, very cheap, but let's, but let's be generous and say they're three cents a pound. Then we got stuff like carrots, which is quite a bit more expensive, right? But what percentage of the stew is made up of carrots? It's not like it's half carrots, right? It's maybe one-tenth carrots. I don't know, right? So the bottom line is we're going to do a weighted average between stuff that costs a penny per pound cooked and wet and maybe on the high end, uh, maybe 20 cents a pound cooked and wet on the high end if it's something like garlic or onions or, you know, something that's, or, 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 you know, or peppers or, you know, something else. The weighted average though, since the bulk of the stew is rice, beans, lentils, potatoes, pasta, right? The bulk of the stew is stuff that's relatively inexpensive. In fact, pasta is probably the most expensive of the whole mix because it had to get manufactured, right? Okay but we'll still have some pasta. Let's be, let's say that net net, we end up at five cents a pound cooked stew blended. Five cents a pound. And now let's say that in a big city, there's say like a hundred thousand people who are food insecure, a hundred thousand, right? 100,000 people for, and by the way, we're talking delicious stew. We're not going to cut any corners, right? Lentils are cheap because they're cheap by the truckload, not because we're out there trying to buy some crappy lentils, okay? So we're going to have good ingredients, whole grain rice, you know, good potatoes with the skins on them, right? Whole natural ingredients straight from the farm, straight from the farm. Okay. It's simple economics. So we're going to get the cost down to like five cents a pound, which is, you know, that's, that's a big serving. A pound of stew is a big serving, right? A good size serving. So 
let's say there's a hundred thousand food insecure in the city. We get to feed a hundred thousand people for five thousand dollars. Yeah, we get to feed. Uh, I, I'm talking about the cost of the food landed at the factory. The reality is we're going to spend probably another another penny or so delivering it bulk. But listen to this, get this, zero packaging. I'm not just saying that there's zero single use packaging. I'm literally saying there is zero packaging because when we bring the stew to a neighborhood, people will come out with their pots and pans and we will dispense the stew through a glorified spigot at a landed cost of, call it six cents a pound, delivered to your home. Six cents a pound, nutritious, complete nutrition, universal stew, okay? Do we, do we drive down the road like the ice cream man? We, exactly, except you're gonna have Darth Vader on top singing Spanish love songs and singing, <clears throat> Cause it's all right and it's coming on. We gotta get right back to where we started from. Love is good, love can be strong. We gotta get right back to where we started from. And in exactly that voice, thank you, Jimena. And in exactly that voice, I will sing. I will sing. Because guess what? We are getting right back to where we started from. People feeding people, regardless of money. We gotta get right back to where we started from. Listen, in the old days, thank you. Thank you, Regina. Thank you, everyone. In the old days, whether you're vegan or not, let's just, let's not even go there. In the old days, if someone went out to gather or someone went out to hunt, or someone went out to fish, or someone went out to do whatever, and they brought back gifts from nature, it was for the whole village. It was for the whole village. We were like, all right, do you have money? If you have money, I can give you some food. If you don't, I'm not gonna give you any of my food. What, are you kidding me? This thing of monetizing food, is the stupidest thing. Okay, but now I've only told you half the story. It's time for the second half. The second half of the story. <laughs> okay, so Peter says, okay, genius, 5,000 bucks to 6,000 bucks to feed 100,000 people. Right, I can see Peter right now. He's saying smoke and mirrors, smoke and mirrors. He's, he's, I'm just kidding. He's smoking. Look at this, like Cheech and Chong, man. Anyway, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so five, six thousand bucks a day is still two million bucks a year, right? Fine, it's not a huge amount of budget but it's still 2 million bucks, right? This, and, and that's just for one city. Now multiply that by a thousand big cities around the world, right? We're talking $2 billion per year just for a thousand cities. Now, what about all the tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of towns and villages, right? So no matter how you slice it, it's gonna be billions of dollars per year. All right, how are we gonna come up with those billions of dollars per year? That's what the second half is all about. And there are two words that somebody in this room told me, I forget which day, if you're the guy who, t or the gal who said those words, raise your hand. I know what it is, network marketing. No. <laughs> Sorry, no. It's even, it's even more delicious than that. <laughs> The two words are these, donut economics. I sent you a video for that the other day. Did was you that watch you, that Peter? Video? Was that you? 
two days ago okay. I sent you email that video. Can you believe that? Have you guys seen Donut Economics? That's amazing. Do you, do you want to summarize it for us, Peter? Uh, no, we should play the five minute the clip that I sent you. I don't want to explain. Now it. we're talking. This is collective intelligence, right? I feel like I'm on the dance floor and someone comes out and calls me out and then they start dancing. That's Peter saying, I got some moves for you. Okay, let me, let me, let me pull it up here. Thank you. That's amazing. I guess, so this gal from, I forget where she's from, Sweden or something, came up with this like 10 years ago or something. And uh, this, this little six minute BBC video uh, really uh, tells the story really well. Um, ah, it's, it's epic. And it's okay. just so Am Amsterdam is being the first city to institute this donut, donut uh, economics. And uh, take it away, right. Jay. You know, I'm, I'm looking for it. Um, do you remember what you sent it a couple days ago? Yeah, two days ago, I think. Um, okay, see. I'll find it. 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 I got it. I got it right here. I got it. I got it. I got it. That a boy, girl. That's a song my so, dad used to sing. So, 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 Peter, I want to. I just want to thank you and acknowledge you, um, because I had heard of it before. I had heard of the story, whatever, but I hadn't made the connection to what we're doing right now. And this is collective intelligence, right? All right. Here comes the share. Prepare to be impressed. Prepare. And just somebody let me know if there's any issues with sound or anything like that, okay? If you manage a team, you have to try Monday.com. Monday.com is a platform to track everything your team is. This is the donut. The goal of the donut is to meet the needs of all people within the means of the planet. Sometimes when I present the ideas of donut economics, people say, mm, is this capitalism or is this communism or is it socialism? And you think, really? Are these the only choices we have? The isms of the last century? Can we not come up with some ideas of our own and create new names for them and see new patterns? in every country are almost addicted to citing GDP figures as if this was proof of success and yet it's so clearly not because we have climate breakdown and COVID lockdown and financial meltdown we have to pursue something far richer to move from this pursuit of endless growth which we can now see is hitting us with crisis after crisis moving to a goal of thriving and the donut is absolutely possible to turn not into a single number but into a dashboard we could hold policymakers to account and say every year you need to talk about how you are making progress on these different dimensions of the donut Outside the donut is created by leading Earth system scientists just a decade ago. These are the nine life supporting systems of planet Earth. To have a stable climate, to have healthy oceans, to have recharging fresh water. And they drew these and called them the planetary boundaries. And they said we must stay in the circle in the middle. I thought, but if we go to the center of the circle where we use hardly any of Earth's resources, that's not thriving. That is actually death and destitution for billions of people. We need to convert Earth's lands for food, for water, for housing, for energy. So I drew this inner circle and said, just as there is an outer limit of humanity's pressure on the planet, so too there must be an inner limit. So the hole in the middle is a place where people are left falling short on the essentials of life. It's where people don't have the food, water, energy, healthcare, housing, education, political voice that every person has a claim to meeting. We want to leave nobody in this hole, get everybody into the green ring of the donut itself. 
Ever since the donut was first published in 2012, people have been wanting to downscale it to the scale of a city or a neighborhood or a nation. And Amsterdam is the first place where we've actually downscaled it. And I've worked together with an organization called Circle Economy, who have been helping the city devise their strategy. I'm having a very ambitious vision of becoming a, a fully circular city by 2015. What happens with the donut is that because it brings all these themes together of the social aspects and the environmental, you need to start a conversation with everybody in the room. We invited all different departments that they were not used to be part of this conversation. How can we create housing in Amsterdam that is available for all different incomes at the same time it's supporting uh, the well-being of people who live in the house and how does uh, this construction is made with materials that reducing the, the global emissions and the climate. With the city donut we suddenly see in the portrait of the city the impact that Amsterdam has in let's say Bangladesh and people's life there that work in producing producing uh, the clothes that we wear in Amsterdam and how a city can start thinking about all this and creating strategies that are taking this into account. The donut does not give us answers. You don't plug in a calculation and it tells you how to do it. What it does is provide a space for people to come together. In fact, in Amsterdam, the policymakers said, we now realize that if we're aiming to get into the donut, we need to change our own internal organization so that we're more holistic and connected in our planning and policy. And I think smart policymakers realize that they don't need a solution to financial crisis and a different one to climate crisis and a different one to health emergencies. They need a paradigm that no longer pushes for endless growth but instead focuses on thriving, on resilience and on well-being within communities. We began with this downscaling in rich cities in high income nations because they are the ones that have the greatest obligation to transform, to come back within planetary boundaries. But I believe the framework that we've created can absolutely be adapted and used in low income countries and cities. In fact, in Costa Rica, they've just launched an initiative called Regenerate Costa Rica. They have an ambition to become one of the world's first regenerative nations. And they're using the donut as a framework for guiding them to that goal. It always looks like transformation is going to take many, many decades. And one thing I think we've seen in many countries from this COVID pandemic is that actually policies can happen almost overnight when governments decide to make them happen. Change is absolutely possible if we transform the political values and interests and the mindset. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, um, I'm actually blown away because I had not seen this video and I did not know about this story in Holland or all the stuff they're doing. And in fact, what I knew about donut economics is totally different. What I know about donut economics, the story I, as I heard it, goes like this and it's actually much simpler. So there's this, there's this uh, I don't know if it was a man or a woman, but um, let's, 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 let's say it was a gal. A gal in San Francisco in her office says, you know what, I'm just gonna bring a box of donuts into work. It's Friday, I'm gonna bring in a box of donuts and um, uh, I'll just put a jar out in case anybody wants to kick in anything for the next box. <laughs> Right. So she brings in the box of donuts, opens it up, puts out the jar, you know, feel free to contribute if you feel, you know, please take a donut or whatever, but, you know, feel free to contribute, but it's certainly not, you know, necessary. And um, 
you know, and no one's even watching. There's just a jar there, right? And uh, what happened was the amount of money that people stuffed in the jar was greater than the cost of the box of donuts. What's going on here? So she kept doing it. She kept bringing it in a box of donuts and putting the jar there. And every day, I don't know if every day without fail, but the bottom line is it was a profitable venture. So she puts two and two together and says, wait a second, there's a lot of offices here in San Francisco. <laughs> a lot of offices, you know, downtown San Francisco, it's all vertical. I, I worked there two summers. I worked on the 31st floor of a like a 35 story building or something like that, right? So I'm way up on the 31st floor and you can see the whole San Francisco Bay, it's beautiful. And as, as Peter can tell you, and as you know, a lot of the people on this call can tell you, San Francisco is a very expensive city because there's limited real estate, it's all vertical, yada, yada. Anyway, the bottom line is the people who work there get paid very well on average, right? Even the people doing, you know, service jobs of XYZ kind, they get paid, you know, better than, than the average, probably double the average or even, tri I don't know, triple or something of the country. And so people there have money in their pockets, especially if you're in an office and you get there at 6.30 in the morning, mm. <laughs> right? It's, you know, you take something home because of all that effort. And so people have money in their pockets and so they're able to be generous to the donut gal. Well, she figured this out and went and built a nice little business, delivering boxes of donuts to offices throughout downtown and simply put the jar there, right? And I imagine that if, you know, one of those offices had a kleptomaniac who would just steal the money, if she's, lo if she's losing money in a given office, all she has to do is shut down the operation, not return. How hard is that, <laughs> right? <laughs> So now apply that same mentality, apply that same exact model to the universal stew, right? Now she was probably paying on the order of, I don't know, a dollar a donut, you know, and maybe people on average would donate, I don't know, a buck 50 or who knows what for, you know, to make it profitable, a couple of bucks, whatever. You know, I'm just, I'm just guessing, right? Um, I'm assuming there were pretty good quality donuts, but even if there were less than good quality donuts, maybe there were 50 cents a donut, whatever. But it's somewhere between, I'm sure, 50 cents and $1.50 a donut, right? That she must have been spending, or maybe a high-end two bucks a donut or whatever. But my point is this. There's no comparison between a dollar a donut and six cents for a pound of nutritious stew. So if donut economics of the San Francisco kind, and I'm really glad we can now marry it with the, uh, the Amsterdam kind, if donut economics can make a thriving business in downtown San Francisco where your cost per donut is like a buck, we are gonna blow that stuff out of the water with stew where our cost per serving is six cents. What am I really saying here? What I'm really saying here is to the rich people, we're gonna say, look, every thousand dollars that you donate doesn't go to a thousand meals. No, 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 no. Every dollar you donate creates like 15,000 meals, right? And they're going to say, all right, now I'm interested. What exactly kind of food are you delivering? Nutritious plant-based stew. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. It has all your nutritional needs, all your protein, all your, all your fiber. They'll say, you know what? Young man, that's something I can support. If you're telling me my $1,000 check will feed 15,000, produce 15,000 meals, I'm in. But you know what? 
with the people to whom we're delivering the food alone, number one, they're going to be the most grateful. And I'm not, and we're not going to ask anyone for a penny, right? But people will donate out of gratitude. I mean, let's face it, you can't really beat six cents a meal. Let me put it another way. If we were charging 10 cents a serving, everyone would buy it, right? And we'd be profitable. But it's, but what the donut story tells us is it's more profitable not to charge and just let people donate if they feel like it. Because here's what's going to happen. Part of, I think part of the success of donut economics is that you make it conspicuous, right? I mean, if, if, if instead of putting a glass jar there saying, please, you know, feel free to, you know, you, you don't have to pay, but feel free to. Instead of putting a glass jar, if you just put a thing that said, you know, feel free to PayPal me, you know, whatever you feel like, you'd probably get a little money. But the thing is, when somebody grabs a donut, there's kind of like a social pressure to give something back, even if it's a couple of quarters. But nobody wants to look cheap. So they throw in dollars instead of quarters, right? <laughs> right. So how do we do that? On the side of the truck, we have a bin and people can throw money in. And no one will see what they're throwing in. They just throw it in. But they'll be so grateful. I think, I mean, I, I'm not trying to make this profitable. But I think the reality is it will be profitable. And what do we do with that profit? We expand, 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 right? You know, we pay salaries to everyone who's helping out, right? I mean, the things, actually, I think it's gonna make a lot of money. <laughs> Most of people are gonna volunteer. But if somebody needs money, Right. Um, and of course, you know, we need to pay for the food. Um, but bottom line, money won't be a problem. There will be an abundance of money relative to what we need. Right. And um, I mean, my goodness. We're going to feed everyone in the United States and then we're going to export the model. Right. Can you imagine? We're driving a truck down the streets of Port-au-Prince, Haiti, and saying free, nutritious Jamaican stew. They're just going to be like, gimme, gimme, gimme. And of course, people are going to throw some change into the donation bin. We're not going to refuse it, right? In Mexico, oh my goodness, people are going to be so generous. They're going to throw in tons of money, tons of money. Again, it's not about money. All I'm doing is telling the second half of the story, right? Which is this is actually going to be profitable. I mean, I can't believe I'm saying it. Feeding everyone is going to be profitable. Even in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. And even if we can't, you know, and even if Porto Prince Haiti is not able to fund it, it's, I mean, we're not going to ask them to fund it. That's the thing. But I, I just want to give an example. Let's take Porto Prince Haiti. Suppose the amount of donations that people throw in doesn't equal the amount of food. No problem. The Haitians in New York City alone will make up the difference. In New York City alone, the Haitians and Haitian Americans, Haitian immigrants, I don't care what generation, first, second, or third. If you're Haitian, you're Haitian, right? And we've had a super cool Haitian brother from New York on this very program, on the block party. I hope he comes back soon. I don't want to say his name because I don't want to. I don't want to feel like I'm publicly hitting up, hitting him up for money or putting him under pressure or anything, <laughs> right? Because that's something we don't do on the block party or on the conversation. But oh my goodness, I'm telling you. In New York City, can you imagine the volume of donations? Listen, if you're high society in New York City and you haven't donated your $50,000 check to this program, shame on you. 
right? Money is going to come pouring in. Yeah. Pouring in. In a river, it's going to come pouring in in the size of a river. And we're only going to need a little stream to pay for all the truckloads of lentils. Why? Donut economics. You know, the main reason that don't, the biggest reason I'd say, one of the biggest reasons the donut economics model works is you don't have to have someone standing there all day long collecting 15 bucks an hour plus workers comp plus social security plus health insurance to stand there waiting to charge somebody five bucks for a damn, excuse me, a darn donut, right? There's not going to be anyone with a cash register saying, hey, pay for the stew, pay for the stew. No, just take all the stew you want. Really? Yeah. yeah. Where's the donation slot? Right? And every, every neighborhood's got its people who are like, you know what? You're helping my neighborhood here. Bam. And they'll throw in a whole wad of 20s. Every neighborhood's got such people. Right? Every neighborhood. They're going to be so grateful. And then people are going to start sending in checks of thousands of dollars. With the first half of the story and the second half of the story, what do we got? A whole story. Catch the dream. With this, we end world hunger. Because here's what we're going to do. We're going to order the first truckloads of food. Yeah, we're going to order them. Because here's how we're going to get this thing to go crazy. So truckload of lentils, that's 40 tons, right? 40 tons of lentils is 90,000 pounds. It's 90,000 pounds of lentils. Okay, 90,000 pounds wet corresponds to whatever. Um, call it half a million pounds wet. Half a million pounds wet, okay? Add in the rice, add in, we're gonna end up with millions of pounds of stew. We're not gonna cook it all at once, but with millions of pounds of stew, from Whidbey Island, we're gonna feed everyone in Seattle who needs it, who wants it, right? At first, we're gonna be, it's, but see, at first it's gonna be like, who are these weird people from Whidbey Island singing beautiful songs and giving everyone free stew? Who are they? It's gonna become a story and we're gonna tell them, hey, we're doing this to end hunger. And you know what we can do? With all that food, we're gonna be able to send a truck down to Portland, Portland, Oregon, where all the riots are happening. And we're gonna say, we're here to bring food to people, right? We understand the people are angry because people are starving, people are without work, without hope. We're here to bring people hope. Food, not bombs. Food, not feds. Food, not feds. Food, not feds. Food, not feds. Right? Yeah. And everyone's going to peace out. Police, take off your riot gear. It's over. Eat some, have some stew. And we're going to have people there stir in the pot. Stir in the pot. Mayonesa. Se bate como si fuera mayonesa. Todo lo que he tomado se me subió pronto a la cabeza. Mayonesa, se bate, 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 mayonesa. No sé ni cómo me llamo, ni dónde vivo. Pom, 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 ni me interesa. They'll be stewing a big pot. Stir in a big pot and just serving it up. Eat up, everybody. Eat up. Yeah.
Thank you. So from Whidbey Island, we're going to cook enough stew. We're going to load up the trucks, truckloads of stew. I'm talking five tons, 10 tons wet weight, bulk trucks. You know, like those milk trucks that are so clean. You know why they're so clean? Because milk goes bad. So they can't have any bacteria, any dirt, right? So it's got to be stainless steel, food grade, all that. Okay, fine. Bring out the milk trucks. We'll hose them down. <laughs> right? <sighs> they have to hose them down. The, the milk bacteria grows like crazy in milk. Right? So if it's good enough for milk, it's good enough for our cold stew. Yeah. So we're going to be driving truckloads of cold stew down to Portland, Seattle, Olympia, Tacoma, Everett, right? Edmonds. And when everyone has plenty of food to eat, everyone's going to peace out. And listen, with the profitability, you know what else we can do? We can add in, we're going to add in bread, right? And we're going to add in smoothies. Now in Mexico City, how much does a bolillo cost? Just a basic bolillo. You go to the store, isn't it like just like 10 cents or something like that? Centavos de peso? right? Something like that, right? 10 cents. Okay. What is that like a penny? So in, in Mex you know, so we can mass produce bread. They do it in Mexico city for a penny for, you know, a good little loaf that, you know, one person can eat and they fill it. That's enough for a meal. Jimena, you probably couldn't eat two of those if I paid you, right? That's how big they are. One of them is enough. Okay. So one penny for the loaf, so six cents for the stew, one penny for the, for, the, for the piece of bread, and maybe 10 cents for the green smoothie with fresh winter kale and hemp hearts from Canada, right? And chia seeds from who knows where, right? See, the Canadians all, are all over this. Christopher's like, I had this all figured out before you even open your mouth, Jamie. Anyway. The Canadians got this. See, six cents a pound. The Canadians are growing just miles of the stuff, right? All they got is land. No, they got land and all kinds of other good stuff, but they're just growing miles of the stuff, right? That's why they can sell it at six and a half cents a pound and still make money, right? It's simple economics, donut economics. So the good news is, all of this is going to be a story, a beautiful story. Deirdre, welcome back. Welcome back, Deirdre. We are recording. And that's it. That's how we're going to end hunger. Through mass efficiency of logistics and production of stew. And we're gonna take out all the costs, especially the costs of packaging, marketing, branding, transactions, selling, buying, all this. Just donate. If you wanna donate, donate. But whether you donate or not, eat up. Eat up. Yeah, everybody's gonna eat every day for the rest of our lives. No exceptions. From Port-au-Prince, Haiti, to Zanzibar, East Africa, to, Tanz to, to Tasmania, to Tanzania, to Quebec, to New York City itself, to Miami. I don't care whether it's an American city, a Chinese city, an Indian city, an Israeli city, or a city in South Africa. Everybody eats three meals a day. No exceptions, no exceptions. And once we do that for food, it's not a very, it's not, it's not, it's not much further down the road till we've got housing covered for everybody. Everybody gets a roof over their head. Everybody gets a nice, warm, comfortable bed with clean sheets. Yeah. Everybody gets clean towels, hot water, 
Everybody, no exceptions. You might need to share a bathroom. All right. The youngsters can share a bathroom. Us older folks, we need our own bathroom. The good news is there's a lot fewer of us older folks and a lot more of the youngsters. Clothes, we already got too much clothes. Everybody just donate what they're not using. Our closets are full of it, right? We're all guilty of that, right? So just donate what you, half of your clothes and we'll all be cool. So now we got food, housing, clothing, healthcare, libraries, thanks to, thanks to Andrew Carnegie. What Andrew Carnegie did with libraries, we're gonna do with food. Andrew Carnegie said, everybody gets libraries. That's why we got libraries everywhere in the United States. We didn't used to have libraries, free libraries. You know, there might've been one in New York City and you know, Washington, DC. Thanks to Andrew Carnegie, we got libraries everywhere. Regina, you get, have you seen Andrew Carnegie, Carnegie libraries there in Maryland? Okay, well, they're all over the United States. He was, I know, I know they're all over the Midwest, for example, but anyway. In fact, they may not say Carnegie on them, right? but chances are he paid for them if it's an old library, right? And that's it. People are gonna to donate to the food fund and we're gonna feed everybody. That's the next step. Now, guess where all that's gonna be organized and, and managed out of and, or, and, and you know all the communications, all the networking and all that right here in this network, in the conversation was born here and it will be raised here and it will never die and what's going to happen is the converse because of this it's going to pull in millions of millions of people millions of people and we're going to get this done and then you know what's going to happen among those millions of people tens of thousands of us are gonna, are gonna concentrate around cooling the planet with SRM. And we're gonna finally solve that problem too. In fact, we might even use the profits. Listen to this. We might even use the daily profits from feeding everyone to fund SRM. And when we're doing that, you know what we become? We become the most powerful and most competent form of governance in the world. I didn't say government, I said governance. Because to govern, you don't need to hold some office with you know marble columns in front of it. To govern, the first step to governing is feed your people. If you can't feed your people, you're on the way out real fast, okay? You want governance, we got governance. We got stew, bread, smoothies, and governance. And with Donut Economics, we're going to have a multi-billion dollar profit machine with which we can fund the massive planetary scale installations of solar radiation management that we're getting. Oh, you're okay, sweetie. You're okay. You're okay. Oh, I, I, speaking of feeding, I need to feed the raccoons. I'll be right back. But carry on. We're recording. I am so excited. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty mind blasting. I thought that was real interesting. And it'll work.
and it sounds so re so reachable and so real and so loving and it sounds like magic yeah that's really it hi huh? it's it just not no part of it seemed unattainable it's like oh my god we really could do that and even if you call it a quarter for a pound i mean a pound of beans is a lot you know that's a that's more than just a meal um it's like wow it's and then like you said <laughs> no and, and a pound of dry beans cooks up to five pounds wet peter you could not eat five pounds wet beans if i paid you with beer <laughs> yeah you just couldn't you couldn't do it you'd, you'd end up like that dude in that monty python movie the meaning of life or something you know the dude who just ate too much and he just exploded all over the screen yeah you'd be like that <laughs> you'd end up like him yeah no it's it's beautiful jamin and just beautiful how the weaving of that donut economics just tells the tale and that that feels like a different one than the one i saw but maybe I saw, I saw two. I watched another one that explained a little bit more about the donut and about, because each of those sectors, you go, you know, the outside sectors talk about how much danger these categories are in. And that's how the, the, the levels that we're filling up. And then the inside categories is how close we are to getting what we want in that direction or something. But so it really, it really looks at all the sectors and has a way of describing the different sectors um, and where we're at. You know, it, it dares to take a look. Okay, where are we with climate change? Where are we with clean water? Where are we with, you know, all these different major categories? So it's a snapshot of the reality that we find ourselves in, which then helps folks do this next major step, which is what is the urgency factor that you, you find yourself in? Right, because that's still one of the big pieces that's missing is that we as a species aren't looking at the urgency factor. A few of us are looking at it, but not very many. Everybody else seems to think, well, something's gonna fix it, or the weather always changes, or technology will fix it, or surely many minds greater than mine are working on this, but it, it doesn't seem like that is the case. <laughs> um, so yeah, beautiful. Beautiful framing of the story and framing of the, the universal unity stew, whatever we're calling it. I like unity it, stew. Unity <laughs> stew. It, it brings us all together. It's well, you've got, it could be universal stew or unity stew. We might as well just call it uni stew, uni stew, uni stew. Um, anyway, some, we'll, we'll come up with something fun. Uh, you you need stew. You need stew. You need stew. You anyway, need stew. <laughs> you need no. You need stew. Okay, we all need stew. And here's the cool thing with this, with the universal stew and the unity stew, everyone in the world will be eating the same thing. Everybody, and in fact, we'll have like every Friday or something will be Universal Stew Day, where everyone. I don't care if you're the Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, Donald Trump. Everybody eats unity stew, and if you don't. I'm going to come find you. And if you're a guy, you ain't going to be too happy, right? If you're a woman, I'm going to say, all right. Um, you know, yeah, we don't I... need to incorporate violence in this. Thing. <laughs> settle, settle down. A little Darth Every... Vader in you came out there. That's no, you're right. You're right. Okay. That's okay. Bad, 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 bad Darth Vader. Okay. Um, but uh, you know, yeah, Every, everybody eats with everybody eating the same thing and everybody in the same conversation which paradoxically starts off about feeding everyone and then becomes, hey, this is delicious. What do we do next? Well, we got to cool the planet so that we can keep on growing all this food at six and a half cents a pound, right? So it doesn't skyrocket to $65 a pound in a Mad Max world where nobody can grow anything anymore. Yes, Jimena. In, in Mexico, well, in Spanish we say, Quien lo cree, lo crea, in, in English would be, if you believe it, you live it. <laughs> and, and, and if you believe it, you, you create it, actually. If you believe it, you create it. Well, now you've got 10 people here, uh, actually nine, since there's two of Chris's. Um, we have nine people here, actually with 
Deirdre's cat, there's 10 of us. So with, and with the two raccoons, there's, there's a I dozen have my of dots. us. I have my dots. <laughs> throw, throw them in, throw them in. Everybody in, everybody in. Um, I got two beautiful raccoons here eating mother daughter and they're, they're chowing down. And we feed all the young crows, the baby crows. They, they've made our, our backyard, the nur literally the nursery for baby crows. Yeah, I uh, have my frog puppet too. That can count as another person. Kerm Kermit, Kermit's in. Yeah. Kermit's, no, Kermit's this in is, the house. Kermit is my cousin. My name is Timrick. Timrick, Tim what's what's Tim happening? Timrick the frog. Awesome, well. Timrick. Timrick, I like it. <laughs> All right. Mar well, Timrick Marco has his hand up. Let's see what Marco has to say. Uh, for one, I I put in the chat the TEDx for the donut economics. The link. Oh awesome, no! Is that, is, is is that that's the one that uh, that Peter showed us, right? No, this is a longer one, sixteen minutes. From okay, but it, but it's the same the same base, but it's the same it's the same gal who who did the one in in Amsterdam, uh, right? Peter just was asking about the longer version. Okay, awesome, perfect, perfect. So, you know what I love about donut economics is you have both the was it Kate Rathburn. And at the same time, you have, yeah, no, Raworth, Raworth, Kate Raworth. You've got Kate Raworth with just this super cool, complete wheel with, you know, a dozen or so facets of life. And then you've got the San Francisco story, which is just dollars for donuts. You know, it's just, it's that simple, right? Dollars for donuts. And we're gonna apply both ends of the spectrum and create a whole story of donut economics, powered by donut economics. And the cool thing is, I really love what they said about GDP is not the measure because just, just consider, just think for a moment about the scenario where all the farmers donate all the grain, all the lentils, all the corn, you know, all the rice, they just donate it. I mean, it doesn't cost them anything to grow it, or does it? Well, oh, it costs us labor. Well, guess what? Volunteers will go to your farm and do the work for free. So we could do this whole thing in a world beyond money. Because listen, if you got free food, if you got free housing, if you got free healthcare, if you got free libraries, if you got free clothing, if you got free laundry service, the laundry service should be for free, right? Jamin Shively gets a new shirt. The automatic machine bzzz, embroiders my name on the bottom of the shirt or whatever, right? Just throw it in the communal laundry and then go to your letter in the alphabet. Shively, Shively, bam, there you go. There's my shirt. That's it. And because everyone has clothing, nobody needs to steal anyone else's clothing. Because everyone has food, nobody needs to steal anyone else's food. Right? We're talking about a world that works. We're about to inaugurate a world that works. We just came out of 10,000 years of solitude in the post-agricultural revolution disaster. We are finally awakening out of 10,000 years of solitude. Bitter solitude, separation, monetization, haves and have-nots, oppressors and oppressed. It's about time. I feel so moved. I am I am so inspired by you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I want to beat Mexico. That's what I've been dreaming of all my life. Y ahora tenemos el modelo. Ahora tenemos el modelo.
economía de uh, panocha, pues. ¿Cómo se dice donut en México? <risa> Dona, dona. Dona, economía de donar. Dona. Economía Don de donar. Donate. Oh my goodness, <laughs> listen to this. In Mexico, honest to God, the word for donut is D O N A. The word for donut, donate, is D O N A R. Add an R. Yes. I'll celebrate and go get some donuts tomorrow. I have an excuse. Wow. You, Peter, you have more than an excuse because listen, if you hadn't sent me that link, I, I honest to God, I had not made the connection with donut economics. But what that, what donut economics does is it took it from the realm of, hey, we got this great idea. Maybe some billionaires will donate to it to, hey, we've got this great idea that will pay for itself. Right. And here's this, here's this lady that's been leading the way. And here's a city that's trying it. Here's the, here's the validation that the model is is legit if you will you're not just some crazy guy on woodby island right it's like we're we're standing on the shoulders of of this program that's gaining a lot of momentum right now it's it's really out there a lot and yeah all right here we go here we grow Marco, I loved your thing. I'm more excited than I look. <laughs> that was that was a good one, buddy. You're like a little, I want to say you're a little gnome. You look like a little gnome in the darkness there. Just, uh, yeah. I've been called worse things. <laughs> <laughs> what I was that like? My working history, I've had just crazy amount of nicknames. Every everything from uh, sh short, fat, little bald-headed guy to Willow from the movie Willow. Oh, right. Uh, also, Magic Marco and um, a few other unrepeatable ones. But <laughs> Elster Bunny. <laughs> that's a first there you go but uh, yeah I, I got in trouble in the one not in trouble but the one kitchen I worked in where uh, I was doing uh, the prep and they would go you had to label all your containers with your initials and mine are ME chef comes storming out of the cooler who's the jackass thinks he's so smart putting me on all the stuff <laughs> He turned a few shades of red when red when I explained to him that it was Marco Elsterman, me. Do y'all see the picture there? I screen shared. Yes. That's the community, that's the first community cafe program that we launched in Southern California in 2015, feeding an entire community for free, right? What we're doing now is a community cafe on wheels. We're gonna deliver the food to your doorstep. The woman with 10 kids is gonna come out with a giant pot and her oldest son is gonna help her carry it. And we're gonna fill that whole thing up. Everybody eats. All you can eat. Everybody eats. 
Can you imagine how delicious the stew is going to be in Mexico? Oh, my goodness. Because once we get the formula right, we measure every quarter teaspoon, whatever we throw in, measure, measure, measure. Mm, okay, now it's perfect. Okay, now multiply that by 10,000, right? Tonight, everyone in Toluca eats. Tonight, everyone in Mexico City eats. All 23 million. All 23 million. Yeah, everybody. We now have the model. As we say in Mexico, pues que mas quieres que? <laughs> what more do you want? Free food for all. And the profits will fund the cooling of the planet. Well, if it's free, where are the profits? <laughs> Apparently, you haven't heard the story of donut economics. Here, have a donut. Ooh, are you trying to sell that to me? No, I'm going to give it to you, and you're going to give me more money than I paid for it. That's how this works. <laughs> That's donut economics. Hey, Marco, I'm going to give you a donut, and you're going to give me more money than what I paid for it. It's that simple. It just works. It's so simple. It works. It, the thing is, you know, it's funny. Um, for the first half of my life or more, my goodness, I actually, I don't know if I told you this, Jimena, but I was gerente de desarrollo logístico, manager of logistics development for Semex. And I, and I led the creation, I architected and led the creation of a system that optimized all their production planning and all their logistics, all of it, down to the last steamship, rail car, bulk truck, palletized truck, palletized rail car, right? Even steamships going off to Singapore, the whole thing optimized. And... Um, And, I've, and I had done projects for factories, big factories, prior to that. So I know manufacturing and I know logistics. And I know how to squeeze every last penny out of it. That's what we've done here. Combine that with the community cafe. And we've been working on the community cafe concept for years. Getting that optimized. And one thing we had not solved is how do we get the food from the, from the community cafe to the people who can't make it there? Like people, like, like a lot of elders and people with disabilities and mothers with little kids who can't get out of the house. How do we, and we hadn't figured that out until now, until the last few weeks. And what figured it out was not me, it was not Jimena, it wasn't Marco. It was all of us. All of us came together and we figured it out together. Hmm. No, listen, with this, this community, this benevolent community, which will grow to the millions. There'll be millions of us meeting. And Peter said something very profound. I don't watch recordings anymore. All the actions in the live conversation. When we have millions, no, tens of millions. We'll probably have hundreds of millions of people working on this because everybody loves food and everybody loves feeding other people. It makes you feel good, right? Compare the number of people with smiles on their faces in this picture. Can everybody see that? Community Cafe, right?
Could you all see that? Even the guy who's trying to look tough is smiling. Could you guys see that? I couldn't see any thumbs up. Could you see the picture? Yeah. Even the guy who was trying to look tough is smiling. Right? Yeah. It brings smiles out of everyone. Big, beautiful smiles. And guess what? The world needs good news now. But listen to this. You know what's going to happen when we do this? The governments are going to come up to us and say, how much money do you need? How much money do you need? We'll say, we'll take all you can give us because we need it to apply it, not to the food thing. The food thing's paying for itself, but we need to do solar radiation management. And the world will stand up and pay attention because guess what? The geniuses who brought you, the collective genius that brought you the end of hunger and malnutrition is now bringing you a cool planet. Wait a second, I'll be right back. I wanna share that in Mexico, we've been doing this for six years now. I got along with my friends in the foundation that I work for. I work in many foundations, but one I work for is called Brandy Killing. And we go to the hospitals one times a month, sometimes two times a month. And, and this hospital is one of the best in Mexico City. And the people is going under cancer condition. And some days they don't eat because people don't don't have the food for them on Sundays. So many people stays without eating. And this really breaks my heart because, because as you said, like if we have the belly full, we can have the heart full also. <laughs> and I've been, I have listened to so many stories and and the most sad stories are the ones of people that don't meet. So, so yes, we need to solve this immediately. I mean, I, what do I need to do? I, I am so committed with you and, and, and not only with, um, with the conversation, but for whatever it takes, like <laughs> my life is yours. <laughs> oh my God. Listen, Jimena, it, the thing is you actually helped start this. You know why? Because when we had that meeting with Dr. Silas Rao on this very Zoom link in the conversation, I'm proud to say, when we had that meeting with Dr. Silas Rao and we worked out the first half of the story, not the second half, but the first half, and we figured out how efficient this could be, we said, all right, this is a go. Let's do it. I don't know how we're going to pay for it, but, but this is a go. And when you, Jimena, said Mexico City is in, I saw Dr. Rao's teeth. He barely, he almost never shows his teeth. He was smiling so much he showed his teeth. You got him to bear his teeth. I'm so, so glad to hear that because like, it's going to be contagious, you know? <laughs> like everybody's going to have, Look not COVID anymore, but something about this going on like a contagious disease. Not COVID, but comal, comadre. Not COVID, but comal, comadre. <laughs> We're gonna have to teach everyone here Mexican, not Spanish, Mexican. <laughs> Regina, and you're, you're, just, on you're, on you're so lucky that I'm really good at calling people up cold and asking them to donate. <laughs> oh, Deirdre, yeah. you're going to only have to do that a couple times. And then the I know, but I'm really good at getting people to do that to work for PBS. <laughs> oh, no, Deirdre, see, here's the thing. <laughs> Jimena got yeah. Dr. Silas Rao to smile, and yeah. you're going to fill the bank accounts of the nonprofit <laughs> so that we can pay for the first truckloads. And once we have the first mm -hmm. truckloads, the the machinery will be going. Yep. It'll be like that giant ball of granite at the beginning of Raiders of the Lost Ark. 
just rolling down. I'd be like, just get the hell out of the way. Mm. And we're going to simply eliminate. There, there won't be anyone, anyone. No one will be hungry. I don't care if you're on some island in the Pacific. You know, we'll, we'll come by boat, right? You're on the top of some mountain, we'll get a helicopter, right? You're down at the bottom of the ocean, we'll get a submarine. Mm. Right? You're on top of some mountain smoking weed. Can I have a hit? <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, I got off track there. You might have to give what? those guys extra soup. <laughs> or extra soup. Here, I'll bring some matches or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, extra soup because they'll be stoned. Yeah, they're going to need extra food. <laughs> Yeah, well, we'll bring more weed. Day, it, it, this is this sounds so awesome. Because I remember when they used to feed the um, hungry from the uh, homeless shelters, right? And because you was talking about this, we what my conversation kind of like here you come with this, and we were just practically talking about feeding the world, uh, you know, and on top of it, I was like, wow, listen at this. That's amazing. Yeah. I can see myself in that and helping out. And I went and donated some clothes today on top of it. There you go. Can you hear you me? See? I hear you. I hear yeah. you loud and clear. Totally. Yeah. That's what I'm talking that about. Was, it was right on point, really. Sisters and brothers, we got this because you know what? With this, we're going to open up the floodgates. Deirdre's, Deirdre's up in Alaska, so we're going to make this a Northwest story, okay? A Northwest story. And it, we're going to cover all the states in the Northwest. Seattle's the biggest city. We're going to start right at the head, head of the snake and go right at the head of the dragon, right? It'll be like that scene in Avatar. Or homeboy jumps on the back of that gigantic bird and just goes, yeah. And um, so that's what's going to happen. It might thrash around a little bit, but we're going to tame the snake of start. We're going we're gonna to end starvation. There will be no more starvation. And the only people hungry will be the ones who set out to climb some mountain and forget to pack enough food. And we'll, we'll, we'll be there too. I mean, we're just going to have like this heat map. Wherever there's like a hiker somewhere who's hungry, you know, one of us will be there on a mountain bike, you know, just chasing him down. Here, here, eat, eat, eat. <laughs> right? Eat up. <laughs> you know? <laughs> there will not be one hungry person in the planet. Oh, there's a prison in, you know, Turkey where the, the prisoners are, you know, they don't eat enough. Well, we'll show up there too. Beep, beep. We got the truck. Hey, we got your stew. How about it? Right? And you know what the prison guards are going to say? You're the guys who are feeding my family. Come on in. Come on. Come, 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 come. Even the prisoners in Turkey will eat up. Delicious stew. Because Jimena is going to be there like working with the spices and stuff. And it's like once we get it right, it's just like, all right, multiply that by a million. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's not going to be bad taste it's going to be the best tasting stew you can imagine because you know what delicious stew that makes you go man that's good dang where's my wallet they're going to throw 20 bucks in the bin for stew that costs 6 cents profit margin no one's ever seen a profit margin that high. They're going to say, dang, this stew is good. Where's my wallet? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. This is it. This is it. This is it. <laughs> And people are going to, everyone's going to immediately get, if we can do it for food, we can do it for shelter. 
We can do it for clothing. We can do it for laundry, everything, healthcare, libraries, recreation, travel, right? Sports, clubs, meetings, games, all the fun things in life, all the good things in life. Everyone should have access. The world's plenty big. There's plenty to go around. We just need to do our job as the caretaker species. Homo ahimsa. We finally did it. Heck, I think we do deserve a bong hit. <laughs> y'all y'all carry on. I need to like, I don't know, feed an animal or something. Where is he going? <laughs> we all know where you're going. <laughs> the animals are hungry. <laughs> Hold on. J man. Well, I didn't say what's yeah. in the bong. I gotta go feed the animals. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. As awesome, we say in Mexico, guys. el niño tiene hambre. My boy is a man. The boy needs to eat. <laughs> Wait, what does he? What does it mean? The boy, the the children, the boy needs to eat. The child needs to eat. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Get the kid some candy. Awesome. 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 Okay. Well, I think it's almost time to call it a night, and you guys are later than me. Mm. Night owls, Marco. Well, I guess Jimena is almost two o'clock, and Marco is almost three o'clock. I don't live in time. <laughs> nice, good answer. We live in five D. <laughs> <laughs> Silly me. Uh. Yep. I'm so fascinated, I forgot what time is it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Not every day you get it. You get news like this. Yeah. You know, working, working with food, there's going to be some scrap. There's going to be some spoilage. There's going to be some overcooking. But that will be a good thing too because we'll put it all in our biodigester and use it to cook with, the biogas to cook with, to stew with, or to make electricity. Um, dude, that's brilliant. No. Good point. Or feed to animals. Come on, poor animals. <laughs> they are going to puke. <laughs> what a great thing man the the different letters and stuff we've been getting from people talking about how this is how this has felt so sweet for them to just have tribe to hang out with as i as i look at us here you know there's there's Regina and Marco at three in the morning, you know, just chilling with some friends, right? And, and having tribe to be with and and maybe some of the others of you are that late too, but even just for me, it's like midnight and I don't want to go to bed, but hang out with hang out with my folks here and I just need donuts. And we, and donuts. <laughs> <laughs> we just solved world hunger. I'm not kidding. We just solved world hunger. I'm not kidding. We did it. All of us did it. Right? 
everyone in this room did it because this meeting was the meeting when we went from idea to full validation. You all had the opportunity to say, wait, 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 what about this? What about that? Right? And instead, Deirdre's like, I'm going to go ahead and round up the money. And she will. And she's right here. She's one of us. She's our sister. It's not like some friend of a friend. We have to call and say, please, please. You don't know me, but please. No, no, no. That's Deirdre's job. Deirdre's job. <laughs> no, Deirdre knows how to do it because she already knows all the people. And we're missing Summer and Eliana and Diana oh. and Daniel. Mm -hmm. and so we're, many we're, ju here. We're, just a, we're just a handful of us. We're just getting started. We are just getting started. We're just getting this stew warmed up. Wait till it's starting to boil. Cause it's all right and it's coming on. We gotta get right back to where we started from. Love is good, love can be strong. We gotta get right back to where we started from. Don't let me bring out my tambourines on you. Ooh, I like it, I like it. Mm. Yeah, I was thinking about, um, I could probably, well, I have a liaison, liaison to, uh, what's her name, Mayor uh, Bowser over here in D.C. Bowser, sweet. And, yeah, oh, listen, maybe, huh? The mayors of cities are going to be calling us nonstop saying, whatever you got going on over there in Seattle, bring it over here to D.C. and we're going to do it. Uh -huh. You know, my, yeah. my, my, my partner, uh, Melissa, she's sleeping right now. That's why I'm outside. So I can wake up the raccoons, tell them it's oh, time for dinner. we're missing Melissa, Jeff, and Frank, and so many people. Oh my, you know, every, every, listen, this Friday is going to be such a party. This Friday, there's going to be singing and dancing and eating and celebrating. Everyone's going to eat. Everyone eats. From now on, everybody eats. Everybody eats. So, um, and this thing is just going to explode because everyone's going to be like calling everybody else. Get in here. Get in here. Get in here. We just solved world hunger. Now we just got to connect the dots. Mm -hmm. At this point, it is color by numbers. It is color by numbers at this point. Okay. The path is clear. We just have to walk it. So all we have to do is just like share the uh, video with them, right? Yeah, like this video that we're okay. recording yeah. right now. We'll just share it. Hey, everybody, check it out. The end of world hunger and the cooling of the planet. Because listen, but because it all fits under, and instead of, we, we, we talked, I think it was last night about liberation from starvation instead of end of hunger. Yeah, it was last night. We talked about liberation from starvation instead of ending hunger. But um, anyway, we'll, well figure it out. There's an importance to what Jamin is saying, because with the planet heating up, then crops are producing less and they're less um, nutritious. So the whole goal behind this would be to feed people and at the same time cool the planet so we nutritious food to eat. Yeah, so exactly, Deirdre, thank you. So that we ongoingly have plenty of nutritious food to eat. So like the immediate thing is just feed people. That's just step number one, feed everybody. And mm -hmm. as we roll out that out, the donations will come pouring in and the people will come marching in to our meetings. And this will be the point of entry. You know, it's going to be like, it's going to be like a fire hose of people, right? People just, ah, just come flying at the screen and we're just going to be direct. You're here for food. Bam. Breakout room. One. You're here for food. Bam. Breakout room one. And in breakout room one, that's where they'll say, okay, are you here for logistics, manufacturing, agriculture, finance, government relations, PR, nonprofits, religious sector, or, uh, you know, nu nutrition and veganism? These are your 10 choices, which, or if you don't know, 
click I don't know and we'll send you to the I don't know room and somebody like Marco will sort you out. Uh, Marco, did you have your hand raised? Yeah, I was just, I don't know if we can roll it into step one, but it should probably be in step two is only uh, buy our, our, you know, source our uh, food from people practicing regenerative, regenerative agriculture. No, yeah, that, that's a really great point. And because the thing is, you're absolutely right. And, and I love that you, you put it in its proper place, which is step two, because if there's a three-year-old girl starving, you know what? I'm going to get the lentils, the rice, the beans, the potatoes, the carrots, the onions, the peppers, and the squash from wherever we need to get it. But that girl is going to eat today. Well, one of the problems right now is there's so much glyphosate in all the food that, and, and the, you know, I don't, I don't know how familiar you are with glyphosate, but the very first patent for glyphosate, and it has 13 patents, I can't remember them all, but the very first one is, it's a, a, a chelator, and it was used for cleaning boiler systems. And when they emptied, just let the, you know, ran it through the systems and then let it out on the ground, they said, hey, it kills plants. Here's patent number two. It's also patented as an antibiotic. It's also used in many, as, as a constituent of many vaccines. Basically, take a teaspoon of that every morning and you'll be set. So, um, with, with the amounts of glyphosate that you're getting in your food, uh -huh. I can direct you to the Institute for Responsible Technology. If you go to their website and, and you know, give them your email, they'll give you all their research, all the third party testing they did on common foods in the grocery store, and you'll see how much glyphosate you're eating each day. Now, the thing is glyphosate being, be, being that it kills, uh, you know, plants and, and biological things, that means it's killing your gut flora. So you can't get nutrition out of your food if you don't have healthy gut flora. So can I, can I offer, um, three words that I think will be like a guiding principle because just like glyphosate, there's glyphosate, there's monosodium glutamate, there's caropectate, right? And the list goes on and on. And that's just stuff that ends in ATE, right? Um, we've got thousands of things we need to track and be you know, concerned about. So I'm gonna boil it down to three words. And first I'm gonna draw a page out of, out of Google that, you know, it's like, I don't know if it was their mission statement or whatever, but what, they had this three words, don't be evil. Remember, Google, don't be evil. Okay, our three words go like this, serve good food. Tasty good food. Yeah, well good, part of good is that it's delicious. This is good food. Mm, this is good. This is good. It's a double entendre. I think I'm going to make it up and see how I taste myself. Well, here's the, the thing. thing. I was going to say the advantage you guys have to realize too is that there's a lot of people that, um, like where I live in Alaska, that grow organically. And so then they just do a community. Um, food hub so you know we can actually get decent food no matter where we are because we can get a bunch of people to participate listen farmers are going to come jumping in and say you know what i just love what you're doing so much that you're feeding all the kids and everybody i mean there's going to be images pouring in from around the world kids in burma who were starving and the truck shows up and we just start serving in, in their case, we're going to start them off with serum and, you know, and a very easy on the tummy, you know, porridge or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And ease them into it. But all these images are just going to come pouring in because there's going to be suddenly just this river of money supporting this. Rivers of money. You're going to have billionaires who say, you know what, what the hell, 10 billion bucks. You know what? 
we couldn't serve enough stew to everyone on the planet in the next five years with 10 billion bucks. That's how, that's how, well, actually let's, let's we do the math. I think it works out to, let's not get into the numbers, but the bottom line is this is going to take so little money, right? And talk about a story. It's a true story. When I was corporate strategy manager at Microsoft, I worked directly with Bill Gates. And I said, Bill, I got an idea for how we can end hunger. Right? It wasn't this idea. It was kind of a foundational idea that had to do with agriculture and kind of figuring out exactly which foods we should grow where so that we generate an abundance. And then the next step is logistics. And you see Warren Buffett, one of the other mega billionaires of the country, um, he is one of the biggest owners of railroad in the world. So he knows logistics and he's super smart. And I said, look, Bill, we can bring in Warren Buffett and we can nail this thing. And Bill Gates, richest person in the world at that time, looked me right in the eyes and shrugged and he said, hunger is a big problem. And you see, that's billionaire speak for, for get out of my face, I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. That's billionaire speak for I don't care. Or tech billionaire to be specific. That's tech billionaire speak. I've heard that so many times. And here's what's going to happen. Other people, everyone's going to jump in and fund this. And you know what? Bill Gates, when he sees the stampede, he will not be left behind. He'll, he'll write his billion or multi-billion dollar check, right? And I'll say, well, Bill, <laughs> funny. Took you a few years, huh? But Bill will break out the bills for this one. And Carlos Slim will break out the billetes. I know people that knows him, so count on it. <laughs> Here's the thing. It, it, we're going to create the bandwagon effect, right? And the last people to get the win will just be running to catch up to the wagon to say, I'm part of it. I'm part of it. Here's my money. I'm a part of it. The billionaires will be tripping over the, uh, each other to write the first billion dollar check and then the first $10 billion check. Right. And like I said, this is governance. The richest president of the richest country on earth is telling his own people to drink household bleach. We are feeding people nutritious stew, hot bread, and cold, green, nutritious, immune boosting smoothies right to your home. Right. Let me ask you real simple. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? God. <laughs> God for me. Yeah. No, no, but you know, in the slang, it's like, hey, who's your daddy? The one who feeds you or the one who tells you to drink bleach? Give me a break. Right? Do a side-by-side -side comparison on that one. Who's going to govern? Who's going to govern? The new answer is, we're going to govern ourselves. Thank you very much. The village people. <laughs> the village people. That's it. Young man, do you know what they say? We've got fresh dew for you right here today. And hot bread <laughs> and green smoothies too. And you've got it fresh for you. Young man, get your ass over here. I said, young man, you do not need no beer. I said, young man, it is time for a meal and I want you to eat it. Now. <laughs> it's fun to eat at the YMCA. It's fun to eat at the YMCA. You can have a good meal. You can get yourself clean.
you can use a washing machine. Young man. <laughs> but this is going to be the story for everyone on earth. I mean, you know what? Here's what's going to happen. As soon as we start doing this and it's just spreading like, I don't want to say like a virus, but like dominoes, right? You know what's going to happen? People are like, oh, this is so amazing. And then we're just like, wait a second. Why, why didn't we do this 50 years ago? Why didn't we do this 100 years ago? Because, we were not born. <laughs> because what? Because we were not born. That's right. We weren't born 100 years ago. And it took us, and frankly, it took this medium to put it all together. Because even four years ago, with the same ideas, I would have been pacing around my room, but I wouldn't have had the same ideas because we weren't here yet. We all had to do this together. Yeah, and we must thank COVID. It played its part. It, it, no, it played a huge part because, because pre-COVID, once again, this was the state of the art of feeding communities pre-COVID, the community cafe. COVID came along and it put the community cafe on wheels. I put it on wheels. And it also made it, Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, like uh, Heaven Kitchen of Bon Jovi or these projects can be joined also because Bono has an also something about zero hunger going on all around. It's called the world. One. I've been involved in One for years. I was the one ah, who got President Obama to do them. the G8, right? I was part of that, yeah. We should involve them also. Listen, everyone's welcome. Go to theconversation.cc, click on the link, join us here. Are you here for food? Breakout room one. Here for food? Breakout room one. Because every once in a while, you'll get someone here who's here for SRM, breakout room two. Right? You're here for gay rights? Breakout room four. Right? You're here for no-till agriculture, breakout room 23, right? You're here for holistic land management, breakout room number seven. We'll just be the switchboard. But most people will be coming in for food. So food, 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 boom, 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 boom. And there you get to the next level of sorting, right? So it'll be like, it'll be like a wizard. Remember those old computer wizards that you click on this and click on that and multiple choice, a wizard. This is going to be like wizards, but they're going to be real people doing the wizardry and dancing the Macarena. Dale tu cuerpo alegría Macarena, que tu cuerpo es para darle alegría cosa buena. Dale tu cuerpo alegría Macarena. Hey Macarena. Dale tu cuerpo alegría Macarena. Tu cuerpo es para darle alegría cosa buena. Dale tu cuerpo alegría Macarena. I mean, it's just, it's and that you're gonna, simple. And you're gonna dance all the time. <laughs> No, listen, I'm going to be on top of the truck. I'm going to be on top of the truck dressed as Darth Vader, right? And I'm going to say what, you know, what the Death Star did to whole planets, you know, making them blow up and stuff. We are doing to hunger and malnutrition. We're feeding everyone. We're blowing from up. Darth, from Darth to your hearth. From Darth to your hearth. Crazy good. Crazy. Just the right amount of crazy, I think. It's crazy fun. It's so fun to feed everyone. Oh, my goodness. And we'll have fun, fun, fun until daddy takes the hunger away. <laughs> well, you you get your you get your daddy stew and you take it right down the street now. Well, you you're feel... feeding all the food to the people and it's really so sweet now. 
And with our radio blasting, Jamin's singing at the top of his lungs now. And we'll each do stew stew until <laughs> everybody's had plenty to eat. Hey, you'll be Darth Vader and I'll be Princess Leia. Love it, love it, love it, love it. <laughs> <laughs> Now, everyone's going to jump on this one. It's just so crazy. It, it's, it's the kind of thing when you look at it and you really get it, you say, it is obvious we need to do this. It's obvious, obvious, obvious. And then we just start doing it. I'm telling you, from Whidbey Island, Washington, we're going to load up five ton, 10 ton trucks onto the ferry go across the, the channel to the mainland and we'll be supplying the city of Seattle and much of Western Washington initially. And we're gonna take it all the way down to Portland, like I said, oh my goodness, no, no, this is just gonna go crazy. And rather than being some secret that you gotta you know, have a secret handshake or something to find out how it all works, we're gonna film everything. We're gonna broadcast, publish everything, everything, everything. We're gonna teach the world how to do it. All the way down to the raising of the money and everything else. And Deirdre will just get on here and say, listen, here's why you need to donate to this. Kids are starving. We can solve it with a few billion bucks. Do your part. If every, if every human being gave $1, listen to this. If every human being gave $1, we'd end hunger. With that much money, we end hunger, right? But the wealthiest 1% have half of the wealth. So if you're wealthiest 1%, right? Don't give a dollar, give $100, and then we're good. If you're wealthy, give 100 bucks. That's it. If you're wealthiest 1%, give $100, and we end hunger. If you're rich, give us 100 bucks. <laughs> That's all we're saying. If you're rich, give us 100 bucks and we'll end hunger with 8 billion bucks. But here's the thing. The rich will donate. The poor will donate. The middle class will donate. Everyone's going to donate. Churches will donate. Nonprofits will donate. Foundations will donate. Businesses will donate. Households will donate. Everyone's going to donate. Everyone's going to donate. We're going to have so much crazy money that we're finally gonna be able to do SRM with similar efficiency. We couldn't do this without technology. We're gonna end hunger in 72 hours with technology because people are just gonna start these operations all over the place. The industrial kitchens exist, the factories exist. Half of them are shut down because of COVID. We're going to open up factories that are closed and locked. We're going to open them up. We're going to put people to work and we're going to feed everyone. In 2016, when my father was dying, I said, dad, we're going to end world hunger. I promise you. We had just done the first community cafe and we knew we were, we were going to do this. And I've had one, uh, actually more than one criminal drug cartel and one other criminal organization try to shut us down. Nobody's going to shut this down. The cat's out of the bag. Just kidding. <laughs> no one's going to shut this down. This is going to become a worldwide phenomenon. It's just feed everyone good food. It's just that simple.
hello. You know, like the Christians are going to be like, man, Jesus said this freaking 2,000 years ago, loaves and fishes, dude. We're, that's all we're saying. Love us in vegan fish stew. <laughs> and we'll have some delicious, you know, vegan stew that's hearty like Southern Cajun. Just no fish, no shrimp, but spicy and delicious. We're going to have all these varieties. Just like the ice cream truck, we're going to show up with probably like, I don't know, three or four spigots for three or four different chambers of, you know, a couple tons each, right? Which variety would you like, ma'am? We got them all. Look, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to cook the rice. We're going to cook the lentils. They'll be hot, right? We'll put them through efficient coolers, cool it down um, quickly to just above freezing. We don't want it frozen, but just above freezing. So we'll get all these ingredients. So we'll have huge vats of cooked lentils, cooked rice, cooked potatoes, cooked and chopped and all that, carrots, onions, whatever, right? Spices and all that. And then we'll have these giant mixers and with portion control and everything. And we'll just stir in, blend it up, load the truck out of there to the neighborhoods, deliver, 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 come back, sanitize, fill it up again, boom, go, go, go. Right? With a couple hundred trucks, we could do all of Mexico City. With three or four, two, with one or two or three trucks, we're going to do all of Seattle. Hey, with one of Trump's golf trips, we could feed all the seniors for a year. <laughs> exactly. <So> seriously, <laughs> for the price of one of his golf trips, it would actually fund, it does, it would fund Meals on Wheels for a year. You, you, you know what we're going to do? Listen, here's what we're going to do. We, the community, we, the people, we're going to run circles around the governments of the world, and we're going to show just how stupid and inept they are. They're building, they're building trillion dollar militaries when all we had, multi-trillion dollar militaries, when all we had to do was spend a few billion bucks and we'd feed everyone. It's ridiculous. They're going to look so corrupt and stupid because they are corrupt and stupid. The whole idea of a centralized government that says, yeah, give us trillions of dollars and we'll go do something good with it. Give me a break. All you do is you create a bunch of thieves. People like Dick Cheney, who started a war with Iraq that killed a million people so that he could become a hundred millionaire. Thanks, Dick. Thanks, Dick. That's the kind of stupidity I'm talking about. Give me a hundred million bucks and I'll kill a million people. That's Dick Cheney economics. That's Dickonomics. That's Dickonomics. See, I just coined a new term, Dickonomics. <laughs> Give me a hundred million bucks and I'll kill a million people. hundred bucks a head. One of the biggest murderers in all of history, Dick Cheney. I hope he watches this. Hey, Dick. <laughs> Beep you, beep you, dick. <laughs> well, it's no wonder the dude had to have a heart transplant. He was heartless. He was heartless. My goodness. So the governments of the world, they're just going to be like these, they're going to be like the lumbering, you know, uh, gasoline car companies with Tesla running circles around them. It's really like, duh. You know, they're just going to be <laughs> They're going to collapse. Fiat currencies collapse. Be and, and replaced with something way better. We're going to be feeding everyone. We're going to be feeding everyone. Who's your daddy? Right? We're going to be making, and then we're going to make sure everyone has a place to sleep. 
and hot water, showers, bath, everything, everything they need. Boom, 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 right? People are going to be donating entire houses, mansions, buildings, you know, that are currently not being used, that are basically in the process of being abandoned. They'll get donated, right? We're going to finally take care of everyone. That's governance. That's governance. Take care. Rule number one, take care of your people. We're going to feed our people. Everyone gets shelter. Everyone gets all basic human needs become basic human rights. It's that simple. And then beyond the basics, education, entertainment, arts, you know, recreation, travel, trips to the wilderness. You know, big ass camping trips, right? I don't know, 100 people at a time. 100 people in a couple of buses and let's go. We're good to go, right? It's all about sharing. It's all about sharing. There's plenty for everyone. We just have to share, right? And we're starting with food. We're starting with the most fundamental. We feed all the baby crows many times a day because they're growing fast. And I sing them Spanish love songs when I feed them. But believe me, they don't come for the music. They come for the food. <laughs> I think, I hope they like the music. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to do a survey someday. Um, but they come for the food. Food first. Food first. That's number one. But people also come for Super Bowl. So <laughs> Super Bowl show. So you can do the Super Bowl show. <laughs> Super Bowl with two. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, if we don't get to sleep, we're going to be up all night. And tomorrow's a big day. We've got a meeting um, in the morning uh, at 10. Um, and you're all welcome. It's on the same link, 10 o'clock Pacific time. So, you know. 10 for me is 12 for me. Yeah. It's Noon. Okay. Yeah. Cause, cause okay. right now it's, it's right now it's like two twenty three in the morning for you. Right. Two twenty three. Okay. Yeah. Noon for you and 1 PM for Regina and uh, even earlier for Deirdre. So uh, cause she's in Alaska. Um, my goodness. We've got North, South, East, West, Southwest, Northwest. Northeast, we have Southeast, we have Southeast. No, but we'll get there. We got Midwest, we got Canada. We're rocking and rolling here. My goodness, this is how it goes. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, congratulations for being part of history in the making. I'd say the single most important pivot in history. Um, since i don't know what this is it this is the big one possibly the most positive pivot in all of world history tonight right here in this meeting and you are a part of it congratulations congratulations it's an honor <laughs> well and you know that's what the awakening is about is moving from service to self to you know to service toward for everyone you know what i'm saying to caring about every per, everybody totally and you know what let's make this the heart of the conversation let's feed everyone and then let's cool the planet And then let's take a smoke break and then let's solve every remaining problem because we'll now have humanity united. Feeding everyone brings us all together. It's as simple as that. We all come together, we feed everyone, we cool the planet, and then we realize that there's so much that we can do that's good, that's great, that's fun, that's uniting. Right?
All righty. Well, let's get some sleep, shall we? Because we got a big day tomorrow. All right. Now, if anyone wants to continue, and I'm going to say this also as part of history. So before I hit stop on recording, the goal is that we get to 24 seven in the conversation as soon as possible. Does anyone have any doubt that we're going to be at 24 seven in one week? No doubt, right? No doubt. Everyone's going to get on board, right? You're going to have people in China saying, which means let's eat in Chinese, right? <laughs> You're going to have people in Germany saying, das food, ja, ja, das, das food, uh, ja. right? <laughs> You're going to have people all over the place saying, whoa, what took us so long? Eat up, everybody. It's that simple. This is going to go so crazy fast. We unite the world. We feed everyone. We cool the planet. Take a smoke break. And then we say, all right, what's next? So in the spirit of 24-7, if somebody wants to keep the campfire lit, go for it. But it's certainly not requested of anyone. We can just shut it down. This is very important. We don't need to overdo it. We're going to make this cruising, everybody. Okay? So don't burn yourselves out. Get plenty of sleep. Know that while you're sleeping, the rest of the community is working on this. So sleep soundly. Eat well. Sleep soundly. Take good care of yourselves. And, you know, because there's not hundreds of us here, if there was hundreds of us here, somebody else, someone's always going to be up. So I say, let's, let's, let's give ourselves the night off. Let's, let's also set an example for ourselves and for everyone that, you know, get some good sleep. And, and let's all dream this beautiful, now that we've caught it with the dream catcher, let's dream the beautiful dream all night long. A world without hunger, a world without want. We're going to finally put a halt to the six mass extinction. We're going to do that so fast with all the SRM and everything else we're doing and the regenerative agriculture. Thank you, Marco. Right? Think of all the species that we'll get to live thanks to what we're all doing together. All right, I'm going to stop this recording and then we can kind of have a little huddle. All right. But first, I want to thank you all for everything you're doing, for being a part of this and for being a part of everything that we're going to cook. We're just getting started. Feeding everyone, cooling the planet. That's just our opening salvo. By the end of the year, we'll probably be talking with so many extraterrestrials and, you know, working on like wormholes and stuff, right? Oh my goodness, we're just getting started. The first step is to feed everyone. And we went 10,000 years without doing that. What on earth were we thinking? What on earth were we thinking? Shame on us. It's hard to say, but shame on us. It's hard to say, but shame on us. And now that we have a clear path, let's congratulate ourselves and thank us. Thank you. 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 And thank you for participating. If you're watching this recording, thank you. You already are participating. Now join the conversation. Go to theconversation.cc. CC stands for Certified Compassionate. All righty. Any, does anyone else have any final words before we stop this recording? Feel free to share.
Spread the love. Thank you. Heck yeah. Love always wins. That's it. That's it. Beautiful. All righty. Well, pausing recording in three, two, one.